Hi, I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar uh, called Rust, a programming language of the future. My name is Igor, and I'm here as a Bla as CTO at BlazeD, which is a software studio that specializes itself with the in the web and mobile apps. So I started using Rust for three years now. I've been using Rust for three years now. I started as a contributor to the Rust language server, which is a language smartest tool. So you get all the nice auto completions in your favorite editor of choice. But slowly, I've been using it commercially and been contributing to the language on the compiler itself. And so I'll give you a quick outline of the webinar. So at first, I'd like to talk about what is Rust in general, a very, very brief uh, history lesson. How is it novel, different? What does it bring to the table? What does it have? What other languages probably don't have? Areas where you can apply it and some of the metrics and the benefits, the measurable benefits of using it in production. And finally, if you're hooked as I am, how you could adopt the language in your tech stack and even rewrite something in Rust or start using Rust directly. So let's start at the beginning. What is Rust? I think it'd be good to quickly look at the Wikipedia page very briefly. So because we all know Wikipedia is the universal source of knowledge these days. So Rust is a multi-paradigm system programming language focused on safety, especially safe concurrency. Syntactically similar to C++, but is designed to provide better memory safety while maintaining high performance. And so Rust originally started in 2010 and was designed by Green Hoar at Mozilla. So this is where the origins are of Rust. And it's interesting because at first it was designed with a small runtime in mind. So green threads and, you know, think go and go routines. But uh, after some time, uh, they continually try to prune all their runtime out. And what they have left was a pretty safe core systems programming language that may and I'd say is safer than C and C++. Uh, and so what developers have to say about this? It was voted, the Rust language was, was voted three times most loved language and a Stack Overflow, Overflow survey. And this is a very big and holistic survey that tries to you know, measure a lot of stuff like helping technologies or which tools are more Law of dreaded and what is what is the profile of developers? And there were a lot of participants, a lot of people use Stack Overflow after all, right? This is industry standard. And this was the typical response. So Rust is number one in terms of most loved languages and not by a very small margin, right? This is 10%. So that's very, very considerate. Mm, but let's maybe go through some of the testimonials of other languages so you don't think of me as this kind of crazy guy that wants to rant about Rust, how it's superior, and I'm the only one. So we have a guy called Guillermo Roche, which is in charge of Now, which is a serverless um, service company, startup. And they were, how to say it, they were used to serverless Lambda functions taking hundreds of milliseconds or even seconds, right? And now they built a proof of concept, the web scraper that took one millisecond. And you can see the discrepancy between the actual duration and what they were even used to. Like in the comments, you can see that something takes, yeah, even this, they wish to get a 500 millisecond runtime with Ruby and they just got out of box one millisecond. So that's really good. Also, you have another company called Figma, which works on the collaborative tools. And you can see 
that a CDO, their CDO posted a blog post in May 2018 about how they introduced it and how this, this how did this change and shift up the um, the landscape. So I'll just quickly go through the metrics and you can see that met, the network traffic is the same. They introduced the new server around April 15th, so around this point. And you can see at a glance the memory usage per their workers dropped from its peak is like four gigs to one gig. That's impressive. And even peak usage of CPU dropped from over 20 to like four. Every time to serve a file from, you know, two to let's say what, like 0.2 on a very stable basis. These are the kinds of benefits you can expect by using Rust. And they didn't even need to get the last oozes of performance out of it. They just wrote the server and was reliable enough to just fire and forget, which is enough said by another company called Tilda. Tilda is an analytics startup. And they tried to ship their agent in 2013 in Ruby. But, you know, uh, it was, yeah, I'd say this was a problem of performance, right? But bear with me. They tried to do the same in C++. But now you can see the actual statistics, the data, like the memory usage of their daemon. So it was very high and they did not have any of the substantial, let's say, features. But after this, they sort of dropped, adopted some of some of the demons, and they maintained the same memory usage, which you can see is absurdly low by still providing more and more and more and more features. So that was that's very considerate. And they also talk about how it doesn't crash. It's very reliable across different operating systems. It's very portable. And as I was saying, it's more maintainable. It's dependable. So you can just fire, deploy, and forget. And so there's another um, data point here. So they also use Java server that could use up to five, five gigs of RAM, but the comparable Rust server only used 50 megabytes. So that's two orders of magnitude lower and also provides a very nice ecosystem and tool chain on the box. Cargo is a very nifty build system tool for Rust. It's very comparable to NPM, but by taking what's the way taking all the good stuff from it, it's very safe, just like Rust is. But even then, it's this is networking, right? But also since it was originally written for Firefox and Mozilla because it doesn't have any runtime. You can just replace an entire system inside uh, such big of a project like Firefox is. So another data point, we have a blog post from the Rust team itself, Fearless Concurrency in Firefox Quantum. They shipped an entire styling engine, CSS engine, they rewrote it in Rust. And they try to rewrite it the same. Uh, they try to rewrite the same system in C++ because it was originally written in C++ as well, two times and they failed because now the fearless concurrency slogan really kicks in. People were afraid to touch code that was inherently concurrent there because they were afraid of breaking stuff. And when they did, they often they often did break stuff. So I'd say this is a very big achievement for and a very big milestone for Rust when you manage to replace 160,000 lines of C++ with 85,000 lines of equivalent Rust code, which is safe by design. And you can see even the improvements. The parallelism leads to a lot of performance improvements, including a 30% load speeder for Amazon's homepage. So this is what you get for rewriting stuff in Rust. And as the current threat trend in hardware shows, we're gonna have more cores rather than less. So it's very paramount and important to 
to use those cards to the maximum amount possible. And even just one quick last testimony, even game developers turn to Rust. So we have a tweet from Andrea Pesino, which is who is a founder and CEO at Radio Dawn Studios responsible for games such as uh, God of War. And he says, it's finally happening after 30 years of Proteus, 20 of which quite reluctantly, I'm officially done with C++. Only maintenance from now on, everything new will be in Rust Lang. And I think that's a very powerful message too, when such big of a game development studio turns to Rust to search for the reliability and performance and safety from all the crashes that plagues games very often. Now, if you're hooked up as I am, what's, what should be the steps to sort of adopt and rewrite parts of your system, parts of your system in Rust to reap the, the benefits? I don't think it's a sound idea to just, you know, drop everything and rewrite everything in Rust from day one, because that, that's costly. You still need to train developers. It's easier to learn, but it's not free to learn. Like it takes a little bit of time. But I think the best thing you could do is to identify some of the um, business cases where you would write new software and try writing that in Rust so you can then connect it back to your own kind of existing architecture and infrastructure. And then see for yourself what the benefits are for the Rust programming language. If not, then another approach is to identify a module or a very isolated piece of code that's existing in your architecture and then try to rewrite it on the side. And then after that's done, connect it back again to your main infrastructure, even if it's inside the same service or program. Rust was designed with low level and C for a function interface in mind. So because C is kind of like lingua franca of the programming languages, it can interop very easily, assuming there's a C bridge. So you can you can rewrite your module in C++, for example. I mean, module from system that's written in C++ or Python or whatever, write in Rust, connect it, and then see for yourself. Uh, if you get any improvements and then kind of gradually adopt uh, your current main infrastructure in Rust. And so I have a couple of resources. So I have a, a list that I used I, where I talked about all of it. We have all the links and the playground, the archive, the examples that I have, testimonials that I used, but also the resources, which is rostlang.org. This is the main website. This is the playground that I showed you. And this is the main repository where you can, if you encounter any issue with Rust, you can just submit it and you can monitor day-to-day -day development on Rust compiler. If you're into that, you can even create your own pull request. And there's also a community for a lot of community spaces for Rust users. So this is the official forum discussion for Rust programming language. They also have the official Discord channel and Zulip. And there is also a dedicated subreddit where you can get all the news and information about Rust and its dealings. So yeah, I hope you're hooked as I am. And to answer your question, whether it's a language of the future, I'd say it is very much so because this is the first mainstream programming language that provides substantial amount of safety and you know of different kinds memory and threat by default while also providing a very approachable syntax and rule set so it's not a very hodgepodge of different rules such as C++ where you're not really sure if you're going to blow your foot off or not but it's a very simple elegant and cohesive language then that is rightfully taking the world by the storm and is the future. So content-wise, that's it for me. And I'll gladly respond to your questions if you have any.